Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast on the narrative lectionary. I'm Ralph Jacobson. And I'm Joy J. Moore. And I'm Christopher Fan Kaufman. And this week we are in the second of our series on the Sermon on the Mount. This is for January 29th. And last week we started with the Beatitudes. And just a reminder, this is the longest continuous sermon in the Gospel of Matthew. It spans all of chapters 5, 6, and 7, so there's so much teaching going on here. But we're looking at a couple smaller chunks of it. And today we're turning to three of the most important practices of religion in the ancient world. We're talking about prayer, we're talking about fasting, and we're talking about almsgiving, or giving money to the poor. And so Jesus is here introducing to his disciples both words to say, but also ways to relate to these three things, which they would have already been familiar with. So I do want to help us to see that. Uh, They would have known that they needed to pray. They would have known that they needed to fast. They would have known that they needed to give alms. But here Jesus is telling them about how to relate to those things and how to uh, speak words into those situations. I got a question for you as we start, Joy. Uh, Um... Christopher and I come uh, being Lutheran, suffering from that um, um, obscure uh, weakness. We come from a tradition where especially the Lord's Prayer is uh, one of the five parts of the small catechism, which children are taught uh, in Lutheran households or they're supposed to be. And um, and so this is a prayer. It's like the first prayer I learned along probably with the table prayer or a bedtime prayer. And um, I know there's some American uh, traditions, American Christian traditions, where the Lord's Prayer is not taught as a memorized prayer, but more taught as a model for prayer. You, this is sort of the things you, but don't, don't, re, don't memorize this. So in terms of your own like childhood and uh, church life, where does the Lord's Prayer fit in? So I wasn't raised uh, a Methodist. I was raised uh, in a Baptist tradition uh, in a non-denominational church. And uh, I was taught uh, to pray the Lord's Prayer in the memorized way, though uh, the church that I attended did not uh, have the... um, um, We were not taught that this was a ritual, but we sang the Lord's Prayer every Sunday. Oh, really? So during the service of prayer, the choir and, of course, the congregation joined in. We sang the Lord's Prayer during prayer every Sunday. And so that was my my communal way. And then uh, personally, um, um, I prayed it every night. My, my mom and dad, you know, every night, you know, we, we ended close the evening with uh, uh, the, the Lord's Prayer uh, and that scary prayer, now I lay me down to sleep, um, which was comforting until I grew up and understood the words. Um, but uh, as as a United Methodist, um, we pray it at the end of our uh, liturgy of prayer each su- Sunday. Um, and I and because you asked, I just have to laugh laugh that um, um, because it's done at the end of the prayer. Uh, the first time I was responsible for. Um, leading worship as a chaplain at a college, um, I did the the communal the pastoral prayer, and then uh, said Amen, and then opened my eyes, and on the order of worship it said Lord's Prayer, and I promptly forgot it. Yeah, right, right. And so it, it was amazing to me how the congregation would not lead me in the prayer they prayed every week. So when I stopped because I was choked up, nervous, and giddy, they would stop. <laughs> so um, so needless to say, um, I keep uh, the Lord's Prayer in writing on top of the pulpit, just in case. Um, but when I, when I think of the prayer, um, I think of it, one of the ways I think of it, it as a prayer as confession and dependence. Uh, so that we are naming with God what God already knows. Jesus says, the Father already knows what you need before you ask. And and so less than a 
God, I've got to tell you what's going on down here because clearly you are off playing golf and you have no idea. And just let me bring you up to date. Rather, it is, let me, let me name with you what you already know and express my dependence that I can't do this without you. And um, I love the Our Father, that this is a communal prayer. But I, I, I would suggest to consider it as a communal prayer of confession, naming with God what God already knows and dependence, acknowledging we need God to intervene for our daily needs. I think that's really great. And especially because of the way it interacts with the two other parts of this reading, which may be a little bit more obscure to congregations. So fasting, which especially in the modern days, can kind of be associated with health or uh, sort of self-improvement in that way. But instead, uh, understanding that fasting in many ways in the ancient world was a sign of dependence. It was reminding yourself that you need food from God, that you don't know where your next meal is to come, is going to come from, uh, but it comes, your daily bread comes from God. And in the same way, almsgiving is the opposite in the sense that you know that the things that you have are not yours. They are gifts to you from God. And because of that, you should uh, be generous with them and to give them to those who are not as fortunate. And so I, I think that that's a good uh, way of thinking of these three things as connected instead of as kind of three separate uh, sort of practices or something like that. Yeah, you're. that's really interesting. You're making me think about that. I mean, if fasting is... Uh, it's got no part in my physical life or spiritual life. I just have to say that. And that's probably a bad thing. Uh, I don't fast. I don't have to fast um, because I, at least since I was a child, when sometimes at the end of the month, food would be scarce in our house and I would experience hunger, but not ever food insecurity, as it's said today. Um, but I don't, I don't experience food insecurity and I don't fast spiritually. And so what am I missing? And what are the ways that, what are the spiritual practices that God might, I'm asking you to this because I don't know. I always try to ask questions in these podcasts that I don't know the answer to so I can learn. What are the spiritual practices that God gives us for those of us who don't fast and don't answer fasting? Oh, man, you took my answer. Wow. <laughs> Do you have a better one, Christopher? No. I, I, I particularly learned to fast uh, in my community, you know, in the congregation that I grew up in um, as a child during the season of Lent. And yeah, yeah. Uh, so that practice that I continue now um not as regularly as I'd like to, but at least during the season of Lent. Um, but when I do take take the, the time for, for fasting, it is always for me to trade it off with the other two. Um, uh, but I had never thought of it that way, Christopher, until you said it today. So I appreciate it. Um, and it is in that sense of dependence that by fasting, I am acknowledging I know that everything that I receive comes from God and I can trust that God will provide. God will provide again if I give away and God will provide what I need so that I don't have to hoard even whatever it is I'm fasting. Um, whether it is my addiction to coffee that I will confess um, or it is just simply um, skipping a meal, at which point, for me, fasting is always linked with prayer. So if I'm if I'm fasting, uh, it is going to be what are you going to do with that time that whatever it is you are giving up, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend that. So if I'm giving up a meal, that meal time and that meal preparation time, um, if I'm giving up an activity, that activity shift. Um, so it puts me in the presence of God, um, that, 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 that's what, 
it gains for me, Ralph. Thank you. Christopher. Yeah, that's think? really powerful. That's really powerful, Joyce. Thank you for sharing that. Um, when I think about uh, spiritual practices or uh, along those lines, if I'm not going to answer fasting or almsgiving, uh, one of the things that I have really come to appreciate, uh, especially as I've gotten older, is the power of singing to yourself. Uh, one of the things I'm thinking about fasting makes me think about kind of the embodied nature of our spiritual practices, that spiritual practices are not simply something up in our heads, but are part of our whole relationship to God and the way in which it is such a shame that we keep singing to only Sunday services, if that's what we do, that the idea that singing is something we only do uh, in church with other people. When our prayers can be sung, when hymns can be wonderful prayers, uh, that's something that I've tried to incorporate more and more into my my own prayer life and my own spiritual life. So that's just the first thing that comes to comes to mind when I think of that role. Ralph, I know that we're uh, at time, or maybe I should say that to our listeners, but uh, if I might, I'd, I'd like to add two things. One is um, the idea around uh, verses 16, whenever you fast, um, don't look dismal. Um, there's a humility that I think that that is calling for, that uh, I am not doing this to make myself uh, say that I'm following this ritual rule, uh, religious practice. Um, and the, the other is um, uh, to look at uh, verse 19, uh, where it says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. Um, I want to turn this idea of heaven, not into a place, and uh, said this uh, last week, uh, that we, where we, after we die by and by, uh, but an attitude here and now that results in practices of justice. And so, um, that giving for others means, could mean making sure that someone has, that is an act of justice, uh, someone who has, who doesn't have. And so rather than, uh, and I think the commentary speaks to this, but rather than having, um, that's okay, when you die, things will be better. No, with humility, my acts make it possible for you to glimpse the, a, just a glimpse of the fullness of what God promises, a practice of justice uh, rather than a promise of a sweet by and by.